Let me introduce myself. Bring this the fall. Bring this the fall. Always good because he's in our show. Bring this the fall. You know what it is. Yes, tonight we have been blessed, man. We have been blessed with a great presence tonight. I'm glad to have this guy in the building. I've been waiting to have this guy in the building. He's been pushing me to have him in the building. Man, tonight we have my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother from another mother, man. I ain't going to give y'all his ID right off back. No, I'm not going to give y'all his ID right off back. First, I want to enlighten y'all with his worldly presence. Man, listen, I done known this guy since he was about 15, 16. We instantly clicked. Vibe crazy. Vibe was crazy, man. We, you know, we linked up in high school. You know, he got put out of school. He was in. The boys, the, hey, the guy, the guy definitely in the way, definitely in the way. Smack you in the head with something, man. Beat you down. All that bully in the street. Nah, I'm just playing, man. Nah, my guy is definitely a great guy. We did meet up in high school. You know, you know how they be switching you around, moving you around in schools, man. Uh, but I believe he did He did get the boot at the school, man. They had to bring him over to where we was, man. That man was too much for the school he was at. So, you know. To keep going, man, we came up with this group called the Hybridized Lords, man. We was a rap group, man. We was like Andre 3000 and Big Boy, man. And just for you all to let y'all know, hybridized meant the definition of that is a crossbreed, individuals of two different species of varieties. Yeah, we was doing too much, but we're going to keep it moving. We definitely, we had a, we had a hot song we called, it, what was the song called? Hot, 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 hot. Man, we thought we was, baby, we thought we was flaming, boy. Straight flaming Cheetos. You dig what I'm saying? Chasing the cheese, still dropping that hot shit. You hear me? <laughs> but yeah, man, we went on, we did, we did, I think we performed, we performed at a high school too. Yeah, we did a little performance and shit. Yeah, we did all that. But you know, you know, we, we parted ways for a second. Everybody went to do their thing, you know, but we linked back up in the place where most of us black men link up in a penitentiary, man. We linked up in a penitentiary. Hey, we both did a nice bid there. I got to say my guy held his own, and I know he remember them foxies and them breaks, man. Well, on the weekend, hey, man, we was doing it big in there. Boy, we was doing it big. So, you know, we all, we, we both went, we both hit the street seeking our greatness, which brings us here today. You know, two successful black men. He is the owner of multiple businesses, one many of you know as the Pelican Room. Yes, the Pelican Room. Big business, big business. I got time today, baby. In the building, we got my brother, my brother, playing game, Mike. Yes, brother, 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 man, brother. <laughs> man, man, I'm glad to have you in here tonight, man. This yeah. is about to be good shit. This I made it. I made, made it. it. Drinking on the, what was it? The dose, eh? The dose, yeah. eh? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. on that thing. So, man, how everything going, man? How everything going? Always working. Always. Hey, always cutting. <laughs> hey, hey, that's a nice blend. We back to hybridize hey, again. We hybridize it again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's crazy, man. That's crazy. The whole intro yeah. part is just so crazy because just going back to back in the day mm-hmm. and really going to three grades in high school and being kicked out of four high schools, I don't know how I did it. Man. I being don't know you, how I did being it. Being yourself. <laughs> if you was high school today, you would be getting kicked out right now. <laughs> you probably yeah. own the high school. I would. I would buy yeah. and fire some teachers, especially that one principal. Shit, like three principles for real. But that's something else, though. What's up, though? You know what yeah, I mean? yeah, man. You know, I just got a few questions. You know, it, the, the big question right now, everybody want to know, when you're talking to anybody because of the situation we're going through right now in the world, how do you feel about the COVID situation, and how did it affect your business or businesses? I feel like stuff like COVID always going to come around every once in a while. Something, if it's going to be COVID, it's, COVID is the flu. It'd be COVID, the flu, something like that. So, shit, I mean, my business was open the whole time. The whole time. The whole time. Yeah. Oh, so you ain't have to compensate no losses. Nothing like, you didn't, the, the business ain't slow down, the club ain't slow Now, no, I, no, no, I, I was unemployed. Okay, okay. <laughs> we all were unemployed. I was, I was unemployed, but my business was still operating. Okay. You dig what I'm saying? Okay. It just couldn't keep me. Uh, keep, keep paying me for my position in the business. You dig? So, 
Yeah. Okay. PUA, yeah. shout out to PUA. Yeah, PUA is great. Yeah, PUA. You know, man, you, hey, with. you know there's a lot of people that's rich that ain't never had no money right now. <laughs> I've been seeing them. Hey, you know, money ain't bar. Yeah, money ain't good for everybody though. Nah. No. Yeah, nah. No. Hell nah. Hell nah. <laughs> Some motherfuckers is born to be broke. Like yeah. I'm supposed to be broke, nigga. Yeah. You take I a was in this shit. You take a nigga that was broke, give him some money, he dangerous than a motherfucker. Yeah. So um I like I like one thing I did like with the COVID, it was a point in time where we had to shut down for a minute when they just shut everybody down, mm-hmm. which was cool for me because I never get to be home. I pay all this money to live where I live, but I never get to be there. So I was able to be home for a minute, but then when they could open back up and other people could open back up because it didn't make sense for them, <clears throat> it made sense for me. I was still making money. You my keep company, let me get that straight. My company was still making money. Me, myself, personally, mm-hmm. I was unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> we marked that again. Yeah. You was unemployed, right? I was unemployed. Definitely, definitely, definitely. You yeah, heard yeah. it. I heard it. You heard yeah, it. We heard sure. it. Hey, y'all just, heard it. But my <laughs> company still survived. Okay. That's what counts. Yeah. That's what counts. A lot of people, I've seen a lot of people going out of businesses, and, and I was still popping. You always going, man, yeah, man, you an innovator. Man. Hey, I done seen you bounce back, boy. <laughs> you need to own Spalding. I done watched you. I done watched you bounce back. The peaks Plenty. and valleys and shit like boy, the stock. Man, boy, life boy. is like the stock market for real, bro. Boy, your reputation I mean. with that <laughs> bounce back, <laughs> <laughs> nigga. Boy, yeah, I, I done been. I done been. I guess I'm just saying, man. I done been rich five times. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, facts. Motherfuckers, I, motherfuckers like. Yeah, how was you rich five times? I said because I was broke six. Yeah, but that show you that's that's is that that's show you what type of person times. you are though. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, it, you can make money. Can you keep money? And can you make it back if you Fuck. lose it? Yeah, I'm a squirrel, man. I, yeah, I was stacked for the winter. Yeah, you, you know got it. I'm stacked for the winter. I don't care. I I I, I spend money, but I'm sneaky how I spend it because I don't really spend it. It only appears that I do. You invest it. You are an investor. See, you got two people. You got people that spend money and people that invest money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I spend profit and only a portion of it. Yeah. For real. One thing about me is I tell people this all the time, and we even talked about this before. I say, S- utilize your money, save your money like you are five people mm. for me. So if you ain't making enough money for five people first, then you ain't making enough money. And if you ain't saving enough money for five people first, then you ain't saving enough money. So then after I make up the five people worth of money and save the five people worth of money, then I spend a portion of one of those persons money for me. And so that, cause I, I, I grew up with nothing. Yeah. So I ain't about you to never have like, nothing again. Yeah. Nigga, let's go. If, can, I, can I say nigga and all you that? You can say, what the okay, fuck you want to say? Damn, this motherfucker, is God damn it. Yeah, you heard Shit. too short gonna be on here. God damn it again. <laughs> all right, you know what I'm saying, nigga? I fucking had nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, nigga, I ain't about to have nothing no more. That's a, that's the security. One yeah. of them, I was five people. One of them five might go broke, but the other four gonna be straight. Yeah. Fuck I, that. Listen, I definitely understand it. I, I'm not gonna be broke either. Mm-hmm. Uh, that 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 COVID made it. I don't know. I don't think nobody was broke during COVID though. The way the PUA helped out people. <laughs> yeah. Shit, you would think people was broke. <laughs> I but, love America. Yeah. <laughs> you can't say that Trump might hear that shit. You want to make America I'm, great? We gonna make America great again. <laughs> you know what I mean, hey, want me tell you? I mean, well, I'll let you tell me. I'm, I'm just I'm saying. Gonna, I, I want to know this though. Do you think that it was a conspiracy? The COVID situation. Do you think, what do you think that, how do you think that arrived? Was it a global conspiracy? Yeah, yeah. She, hell yeah. Man, that should be getting put out there. Nah, for real, this is what I really think. I think that this is real life, because I be, I be, I'm uh, flat out, I think that viruses is in the globe. You dig what I'm saying? And every once in a while, that should just come down and settle down and people catch it. It's always going to be some type of new virus mm-hmm. in the world. You dig what I'm saying? So, in honestly, I, honestly speaking, I don't think it was no conspiracy. What I think was the conspiracy is the way that we handled this other virus. You feel me? Like, the, the powers that be, they know that there will be, and sometime, it might be 100 years from now, but eventually there's going to be another virus. Mm-hmm. Feel me? 
And they already setting up like what type of moves we make when it comes because it will come. The cold is a virus. The flu is a virus. If you before it was COVID nineteen coronavirus, they already had coronavirus. I was looking at you like everybody scrambling last year about coronavirus, and I get some Lysol that they've been making. They, and it said kills coronavirus. Coronavirus on the back. You, you're right. So that means coronavirus Facts. been around. Facts. But they the conspiracy is when this virus hits hard, how do we capitalize off of it globally? And the only thing about it is, is that some of us that didn't know that knew that it was time to capitalize off of something. Some motherfuckers start getting money. Even broke people. People was accidentally coming up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, shit, the conspiracy isn't the virus. The virus is real, but the conspiracy was how we play this shit when it comes. You dig what I'm saying? It's like... So China, Wuha ain't had nothing to do with it. Hell nah. You know what I'm saying? It probably just landed there first. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. But they ain't had nothing to do with it. It's a virus. Nobody... A virus is going to come. You dig what I'm saying? But now, this is what I'm saying. Is that it's just like the streets. It's like people... It's like... It's just like the streets. A homeboy in the streets, he out there in the hood. Nobody, some niggas may not like him, may like him or whatever, but he in the hood. He hustling every day. He doing what he, he doing. He want to do, right? Then he get hit by swap, boom, right? But he throwing stuff and everything. And the, the neighbors they see it. As soon as the police leave, they run up in there, Du-du-du-du-du-du. get his TVs, get his, you know what I'm saying, get his, get his designer. You know what I'm saying? The little shit that the police didn't find. And so it wasn't that they hit a lick. They just knew the time to come up off of that nigga. He about to be at least downtown for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> so so let me get in where I fit in. And that's how the, the government did with coronavirus. The coronavirus came like SWAT. You feel me? And the and the and the, the global government started doing their goddamn thing. But I ain't gonna get too deep, you know what I'm saying? With that. I mean, it, it makes GG, sense. It makes sense government. because you know, you know, they had it out here as five G was the corona, you know, yeah. the COVID. They all kind of all, all, all to come up. It's time. It's when it's time to bust the move. Bust the yeah. move right now. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? We got to put these 5G towers up. All right, let's bust this move right now. Everybody, the powers that be, know that it was about to hit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers knew it was about to hit. Investors, all that. Motherfuckers taking their money out of stocks and cryptocurrencies and, and, and selling hold off. Hold up, hold up, the, hold up, hold up. Before we, because I, I was going, that was one of my next questions. What is that? Since we already, done, since you already done hit that bump, that Don't speed bump. Listen. Cryptocurrencies, stocks. I love now, it. Now you mentioned that before we talked outside of the uh, outside of this segment. What enticed you to go ahead and get into that avenue in your life as far as stocks and cryptocurrency and all that? And that's just the next level of investing. Mm-hmm. That's just the next level of investing. I got mm-hmm. a I got a cryptocurrency story and shit. You know what I'm saying? Long story short, I fucked up. I could have been buying Bitcoin when it was eight hundred dollars a coin. You didn't believe in it. It's not that I didn't believe in it. It's that a, a motherfucker told me, was telling me, all right, so you already didn't, I'm in the halfway house, right? Yeah. You feel me? Y'all see, this is how you know this nigga's a gangster. I'm going to tell you why. All gangsters talk with their hands. The nigga been beating on the table the whole time. <laughs> yeah. oh, but I'm in the halfway house, right? And I did a federal bid. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and I come home from the halfway house. And I got some little paper left over, and I'm chilling though. I'm just waiting to get out. And it's a couple of roommates, but the one roommate was in there. Um, he like he he to the curve. He fucked up, but he he pitching his game on us, talking about like you know Bitcoin. We don't understand this stuff because I didn't never even heard about it until he telling me about it. Mm-hmm. Bitcoin, this that another. You can do this with it. Woo woo. And I'm like, look, he like you know eight thousand dollars get you ten coins because it was like eight hundred a coin. But I'm not understanding none of the shit talking about eight thousand dollars. Get me some coins. Some, yeah. Nigga, you got me fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I know what to do <laughs> with my money. Sonic the Hedgehog. Shit. <laughs> but so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, give me some coins and stuff. So I'm like, look, man, I'll tell you what I'm going to do because either it's going to work or we're going to have a problem. Mm-hmm. He's trying to get me to invest. He's telling me how to make the money, but I'm not hearing none of that because I know how to make my money make money. But I'm like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, if you saying it can do all this, I'm going to loan you 4000 you do what you do. You get me something. Man, this guy right here, man. Do y'all hear that? Listen to what he said now. Listen to what he said. <laughs> Sir, since you believe in it, what I'm going to do is to make sure that my money is good, mm-hmm. 
I'm gonna loan it to you. I'm gonna loan it to you. If you fuck my money up, make sure you got my money. I'm man. coming. Listen. We gotta figure this out. Listen. You feel me? <laughs> so I loan it to him, but I'm like, you gotta do some shit for me. But at the same time, the other dudes wasn't believing him. You feel mm-hmm. me? They went, they like, man, this old goofy ass. But I believed in him. The guy, I could tell he was telling me the truth, but I understand that shit you was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Since so, you know the way, you go the way. You go to do yeah. that way, but I want my money back. But just mm-hmm. you look out for me, you know what I mean, on how you do what you do and, and get my money back to me and just come up, bro. And if you show me you can do something with that 4000 and you get me a little something in, in, in line to get me my money back, I'll loan you the other 4000 mm-hmm. So in two days, he was in, down there in two days, he was back at me. You know what I'm saying? I, I would keep it 100. He, he, you know what I'm saying? He popped up on me like, shit, man. I got a rental car out there for you. You know what I'm saying? And anybody else who want it, I got you. You know what I'm saying? This nigga was doing some other shit that I still ain't understand, <laughs> but I know the whole hood had rental cars. You feel me? Through me. You feel me? So then I loaned him the other 4000 Long story short, he ended up paying my eight bands back, but he was on after that. He was on. He was on. As we get out of the house, he up. He get he cribs. Off a of Bitcoin? Off a of Bitcoin. Oh. But, but, but see, he was using Bitcoin to purchase things. Yeah. Right? He was purchasing things with his Bitcoin. Okay. Feel me? But I ain't understand none of that. That's not my world. Feel me? So, long story short, if I had bought the $800 then a coin, then. 10 coins for eight bands, right now, 10 coins is a half a million dollars. $510,000. So the $8,000 I could have bought 10 coins and let them sit. Right now, Bitcoin is at 51000 If I would have bought that in Dumbo, what'd he say? Uh, yeah, Jay-Z. What'd he say? What'd he say? Yeah, what'd he say? Yeah, I could have bought a, I could have, could have bought a building in Dumbo oh. for like $1 million. Yeah. Right now, now it's, it's like, worth. like $14 million or $40 million. It was something crazy, but that's how it was with the Bitcoin. Dumbo. Right? Mm-hmm. I was, I'm, I'm Dumbo. Mm-hmm. Right? But, I did catch the wave, not the eight hundred dollar wave, but I caught a wave f- thanks to COVID. Yeah, now you know what that means. That makes me Dumbo because yes. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. So we're, yeah, yeah. You passed the Dumbo. <laughs> p- 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 <laughs> yeah, I bounced back. I bounced back. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I've been buying a Bitcoin, fucking with that, and some other cryptocurrencies. You know what I'm saying? And then I've been just flirting with the stocks, getting more and more heavier into the stocks, and it's push button money. This yeah. is sweet, right? So just regular stocks, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, different stocks. I gotta, you know, what I'm saying, don't get it confused. I'm a hood dude, but I'm a good dude. I have a very diverse portfolio. Hey, yeah, it's best to be that way. It's yeah, best to be. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. I just started playing with the stocks. You know what I'm saying? A couple hundred here, a few, a couple mm-hmm. thousand here, a couple thousand there. And now I get the feel for it. So now I'm paying attention to everything. And now I'm trading. I'm holding. I'm dumping. And it, it's, it became, it's, it's a new passion of mine right now. Do you, you know, know about options? Well, now this is the thing about the options. I haven't flirted with the options because when you're flirting with the options. It's big. It's, it is big, but there's, you, you get to, your options can expire. Exactly. Feel me? You have to sell them before the expiration. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And and now you're dealing with other people. See, right now, how I'm trading my stocks and holding and everything like that. You're responsible. You hold. I'm yeah. responsible mm-hmm. for it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So there's stages to it. You feel me? There's stages to it. So I just expanded my portfolio a little bit, right, uh, just the other day. Yeah, I'm in a class right now for stocks as well. That's why I asked you about the options. And the mm-hmm. next course will be the options. Uh uh, currently, I'm just getting. I'm in a, in, in a position of learning to read the charts. So you know, we getting older, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nah, so you, you get older. I'm yeah. still young. I mean, I, I'm I, still young, y'all. So yeah. that y'all know. Hey, hey, like I said, I met him when me. I was 15, 16. He was 15, 16. Two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you work your math. If you do good in math, you work your math. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, but I love it, man. So it's just crazy though because. How all these years ago, right? Mm-hmm. And we link up, man. And you know what I'm saying? Look at it. All the way up until now, Look and then it. here we are sitting at this, sitting at this round table, and it's always it. cutting and always working. Look at it right here. You know listen, what I'm saying? Listen and look, look, look. If you see y'all can't see this right now, so the you know the next time he in here for this interview, man, we definitely gonna be this gonna be a visual. 
Right now, this is just audio, but if y'all could see right now, I got the blue lights for him and everything, but y'all, you know, y'all just leave it at that. You oh, dig yeah. what I'm saying? You dig what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You see how, you see how we work together the here? Red man, yeah, the yeah. red man got the blue lights, man. That's another story right there. That's a whole saying? other story. That's real hybridized lords, you know what I'm saying? I just exactly. say, I, I say this story, you know what I'm saying? When I met this man right man, in high it. school, dog, Yeah. and this nigga, you know what I'm saying, this is a black nigga like me, but he got this shiny ass, all this hair, right? <laughs> And then this nigga flanked up. I'm just saying, can I say that? Yeah, yeah, you this can, nigga yeah. flanked up yeah. with a B chain on. I'm like, man, who this nigga think he is, cuz? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this, nigga, this nigga think, think I'm from, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm like, damn, cuz, this nigga flanked, you know what I'm saying? Like, man. And, and I'm low key, and I'm low key, you know, hating cuz this nigga got all this fucking hair. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this nigga. Man, then he flanked up, and I think I'm the hardest nigga in this school. I just got kicked out of a hell of a school. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you came from where they came from. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I just got kicked out of a hell of a school, and um, shit. I'm like, but then this ended up being my brother, man. This ended up being my brother, brother. brother I'm talking brother. about from same walks of life, mm-hmm. different sides of tracks. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Different color spectrums. We're gonna just leave it at that. And, um, and he took me to the spectrum without letting me know about the spectrum. I didn't find out about the spectrum until damn near 10 years later. I'm like, hold up. Yeah. You had me out there like that. He said, you was good. You was with, with me. me. Oh, oh shit. shit. You know Nigga, let me know before. In the, middle of, in, in the middle of it when it was still action packed. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I didn't even Nigga know. Nigga was like, Nigga said, damn, cuz. Like, what? It was like, like, who's this? <laughs> like, who is this? Who you got over here? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, 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 but we was fully entrenched, so it was all love, man. Yeah, that was that a beautiful was, thing. That was crazy. You know what I'm saying? That was crazy. And then, so, sitting here being grown men and, man. and like, discussing stocks and options. Man. Cryptocurrency in the flip. To be here. <sighs> to be here. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then that middle road. Damn, we traveled down that middle road. Man, that, that, you know what I'm saying? The bluebird. They don't know about the bluebird. You feel me? Taking that bluebird up the road. I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna tell you how, how how close this is and how tight this is. When people be looking for him, and if you don't hear from him, they be like, "Man, call B, <laughs> B, man, you heard Mike? You heard from Mike? <laughs> man, yeah, man, I gotta give him the story. <laughs> then next thing you know, you get that phone call like, "Hey, B, I'm out. Hey, man, hey, 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 B, what, what? I got you, bro. I got you. I got you." And it be tripped out. People be like, "Damn, dog." Like, how you get locked up? You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'd be like, shit, I don't know how I got locked up. Yeah. I thought I was cool. Police feel different and shit. Man, you are the Spalding. You bounce back <laughs> yeah. every time. You, get, you bounce back even further than you was before you left. Yeah. So what actually inspired Playing Gang Entertainment? Like, what inspired that? Because I noticed when you came home, you had that already ready. That was mm-hmm. something that you had to... Locked and loaded. I did a lot of laps. I probably did literally... Like, I probably did literally... Uh, me and my homeboy JP, shout out to the homeboy JP. He can be coming home soon. Um, my homeboy, my older homeboy Day Day from out in uh, Sacktown, that was my older homeboy. We did a lot of laps too. So I probably, I literally probably did, um, I literally probably did 200,000, maybe not 200,000, maybe like 100,000 and some change laps around a track. You feel me? Just plot, planning and strategizing and telling niggas what I'm going to do and watching niggas like, yeah, I, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, right. and then I'm, I'm, I'm building. And so the whole thing was I'm an international, I'm an international person by, by blood, by nature. You feel me? So when you think of a P L A N E you feel me, it's above it. It's above everything. This thing it's can go everything. anywhere. You feel me? It's playing game. That mean that, we can go anywhere. We can be anywhere at any given time. We above everything that's cracking because we really popping. Mm-hmm. So it's just like a thing to put it together. It's like shit, niggas, the playing gang. I, and then I, I was a part of a, me and a partner of mine owned a record label, Americonium Records. And um, when I went through my little tribulations, um, they kind of like, they kind of like deviated from the plan. And I had put the plan in motion. And so then we had, the company I am life. Okay. And um they kind of took it like like they did that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm the person who b- breathed life into that. Excuse me. See, his phone, hey, his phone blow up. That's how you know, look. 
But um Boss. <clears throat> but uh <clears throat> real shit. So I said, listen, man, I ain't about to go through all that. Niggas is getting like life off of my concerts and everything like that. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let them have that. Mm-hmm. Feel me? And I'm gonna come home. And I'm going to start something, and I'm going to crush that without even trying to. You feel me? And it's all love now because I told them what it was. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never tripping off of that. I, I don't hold no punches. I told them what it was, right? But it's all love. We in a good space right now. But that company don't is nothing no more. And this year is Playing Gang Entertainment's five-year anniversary this year. I know you know that. I know that. So and I watched that. <laughs> I watched you breathe life into that. I remember the shirts when you when the shirts was made with the shiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I was there. Well, uh, who, who 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 did you bring that time when we went to the uh, what, what what was that? The Big Easy, the Big old Big Easy joint. When I brought Boosie, was not oh, was YFN Lucci. It was Y T I. Why or T.I. T.I. That was yeah, after yeah, YFN yeah, Lucci. Yeah, you know yeah. I remember the T.I. Yeah. Man. I remember Playing looking down. Playing gang, yeah. hustle gang. Yeah. Playing yeah. gang, yeah. hustle I gang. I remember that. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. I remember looking down at T.I. from a distance. Yeah. And I was like, it was crazy because I was looking at him and he peeped the whole room. He seen me. He looked right at me and like, oh, what's up, bro? I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, he's go- he pay attention. He pay attention. He, he pay aware. Attention. I like why I like Tip because he, he is aware. Yeah. But, yeah, so... When I came home, I just put it in a motion. And okay. for real, I, we weren't even supposed to have smartphones in the halfway house and shit at the time. You know what You're I'm saying? You're always in, innovative, man. But listen, bro. I booked my first show, the tickets, did the promo, the post, and everything from the halfway house. The girl. Yeah, man. <laughs> shout out to the home girl. I think that's cool. I can say her name. Shout out to the home girl. I am Cash. Yeah. She, she, was coming up, she was coming up to the halfway house. To get, she was selling concert tickets and she got a real push so she could sell a lot. She coming up to the halfway house to get concert tickets from a nigga. I'm in the halfway house, so I dip up, I dip up in my room in the halfway house and I'm up under the cover with the smartphone with the with the light down low doing promo posts and shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and then when I got out of the halfway house days later, my first concert was there. So the five year anniversary um, of Playing Gang Entertainment. Is also my five year anniversary of being home from the Fed. You know what I'm saying? Man. So it's a major I told five y'all, years. I told y'all this guy Spalding. <laughs> Spalding got it. Hey man, Spalding, if y'all listening to this, man, y'all need to contact Playing Game Mike, man. <laughs> yeah. Entertainment. Hey, they need to sponsor me or something. Hey, they right? need to sponsor him, yeah, yeah man. man. You need your own spot they on that. Hey, them, go I'm ahead. the bounce back kid. You know what I'm saying? Man. Hey, what's the what who make the who make the tennis balls too? Shit. Whoever make them motherfuckers, you need to be on that too. That's the point I'm making. Tennis balls, soccer balls, them motherfucker ball that bounce. <laughs> they like you, you got it. Motherfuckers like, man, this, this it ain't gonna work. I said, man, man. you a goddamn like this. Like, man, the, the last man. Boosie concert, it was, it, it ain't do. Man, it's about to do what it do, bro. And I sold it out, bro. I sold it out from the halfway house, bro. He gonna make it happen. He got time today, tomorrow, yesterday, whatever day the motherfucker yeah, is. Always he's working. Always working. <laughs> always working, man. <yeah. laughs> You know what I'm saying? So did you feel like when you, did you know it was going to be this successful? Like the playing game, did you just know? To be did, honest? Yeah. Yeah, I did. That's what I like to hear, man. I did, bro. Manifestations. Yeah, yeah. When I walked that track, I told you I did a hundred and something thousand laps, bro. So people think that I be doing like different shit. Mm-hmm. Some niggas would even call it weird. But like, I'll bust some tracks out sometime walking, sometime running. And homies would be like, come over. And kick it, I'd be like, shit, I'd be over there, but I don't really be kicking it like that. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But I'd be marking my laps when I go back in. You know what I'm saying? And I'm marking my laps. And I'm talking about I got a book uh, just that was in my cell at that time with just laps. You know what I'm saying? 14 laps, you know, today. You know what I'm saying? 27 laps running with, uh, like I said, the homeboy JP, Jermaine Patterson. That's the homie right there. Good dude. He used to run me. Uh, on a track until I be ready to throw up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. See, because he, he, oh my goodness, boy. And I got on that track with him. I couldn't run a mile. You know what I'm saying? He got me up to three miles running. You know what I'm saying? That, hey, that conditioning. Man, but I would walk a hell of a lot of laps too, though. You know what I'm saying? With the homeboy Day Day, the older homie, because he don't, he don't play that running for what, for real. With all that, have you ever thought about, since you have been through so much, have you ever thought about writing a book? Yeah, I'm going um, to wait till next year. Next year, mm-hmm. I'm going to write my book. You know what I'm saying? 
Next year, I said I'm gonna write the book because it's a, a hell of a story. What's the wait for though? What's the wait for? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you trying to bring up my age or yeah, something? Yeah. No, I mean I'm just saying, what's the wait for? Because we Man. ain't in the gym. Nah, so. <laughs> nah, we ain't no in the saying. gym. So what's the wait for? All right, so now next year mm-hmm. I'll be forty. Mm-hmm. For me. Oh, see, see, now you know how that works. See, I wasn't thinking that way. <laughs> you thought about age. That does. <laughs> I said, you know what I said? I'm still in my 30s. You feel me? And so next year I'll be 40. Okay. And um and um I write it at 40. You know what I'm saying? I get you. That's a good, that's a good time to start that. That's a good I time. I write, I write the book at 40. And plus, I got a, I got a, I got a couple more accomplishments for the first book. Okay. And I'm sure that I reached, I attained those goals by time next year come. Um, don't ask me honestly, about my age no more. No, you don't need you. Don't, it ain't gonna make no difference because you know what? <laughs> the generation that we was born in, for somebody to look at us, they would never know that we were the age that we are. I yeah. don't even think that the age is even old. You only thought that age was old when you was young. young. Now I, it's I, like I don't trip. The reason why I don't trip because everybody be like, "You, you how old?" Yeah, I'm like, man, stop it. You but then you be thinking like, "But well, damn, is that old? What is old? Well, what makes you old?" I, it's, hmm. Yeah, you think about it though. What makes you old as a person? Like, I think what make you old. The reason why we ain't old, I think what make you old is when you out of style or outdated. Oh yeah, we ain't ever gonna be that. That's when you get old. Yeah, you feel me? Like, yeah. if you in style and you on up to date, you ain't old. You are OG. Backdate that shit. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't out of date. I'm up to tune. I don't even have to follow trends. I create them. I can dig it. Feel me? Don't make a hey, day. Don't follow the wave. Make the wave. There you go. I can dig it. I that. just wish I would have figured some of the stuff that we got figured out Man. earlier. Yeah. You know where that comes from? That comes from the people that taught us role models, people that was ahead of us. We, we had to find our way. We had yeah. to experience it. Yeah. And you still try to get it. You still... Damn, that's crazy you said that because that goes on to the next question. How do you inspire the youth? Like, for somebody that came from where you came from, where we came from, mm-hmm. what do you do to inspire them to let them know that it's, it's possible to be successful coming from where they're coming from? I respect where they at. A lot of OGs that's supposed to be OGs, they ain't living, living by the real OG code, which is when you looking at the youth, you got to you got to remember that you was a kid too. So then I don't care if you're doing wrong or right. I respect where you at. Let me give you something of where I'm at. And that's cool. It ain't no pressure because I respect where you at with it Mm -hmm. because I was there and they might not know me or don't see me because I'm growing. I'm a growing man, but I respect where you at. So then it's easy for me to give this, these younger dudes like, and they, they talk about um to me and they don't mind saying that to me because I respect where they at. I ain't I ain't gonna not respect you if you thugging when I was thugging. You feel me? And you might not be able to see it, but I see I see you. You feel me? Some people do what they want to do because they want to be seen. You feel me? Exactly. And I can't listen to you if you can't see me. And that be the problem with a lot of these people. They quick to bash the young dudes for doing stupid shit, but they was a dumb motherfucker. They got themselves. You know what I'm saying? So first thing is, I feel like I connect with a lot of younger dudes because I'm letting him know, or I'm letting this young lady know that I see you. Once a person can respect that you see him, Mm -hmm. then they can hear what you're saying. Feel me? So what do you say to them? Or like, how do you show them like that inspiration to give them that motivation or that ambition to keep going? I just holler at them, man. I just kick it out and do me. Because if I just holler at them, I don't got to teach them. You're going to emulate my movements mm-hmm. if I'm keeping it authentic with myself. So I'm just going to holler at you. I'm going to let you know that I see you from me. And then I'm going to, then I'm going to let you see me. I already see what's inspiration for them because this is for the next question. Do you have an addiction to jewelry, cars, the finer things in life or women? You dig what I'm saying? You hear me? I got time today. <laughs> so, yo, yo, we this is all audio, so y'all can't see. You, you see, but we, we we will be here soon with the video, so y'all can see the shimmer. The shimmer is in the building. Uh, 
Burr. I, 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 <laughs> I, um, I'm not really addicted to cars, okay. right? Because I'm addicted to money, okay. right? And so I am a little bit addicted to jewelry. ATM, shout out. <laughs> ATM, addicted yeah, to money, man. Shout out to the homie Prince. Yeah. You feel me? Hey, look, this is the thing. I'm a little bit addicted to jewelry. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm addicted to jewelry. But the thing about it is, I just, I value jewelry more than vehicles. Why? My jewelry is a commodity. Your jury ain't fucking playing no game. <laughs> it's snow outside right now. It's snow outside right now. But that so, shit right there killing the snow. <laughs> hey, it, it is a weather yeah. advisory for the snow. <laughs> so I, I try to invest in quality jury. Definitely. Right? But definitely. so my jury can appreciate them vehicles, They most of them, unless you get like this specific number cars and all that, it depreciates. Exactly. I'm an investor. You know what I'm saying? So my jury is is accounted for. These cars ain't every year. Three years from now, it don't matter what. I can get a new. I can get a new Bentley right now. Three years from now, that ain't the same car. You right. feel me? But I can get another new Cuban right now. I just got this second Cuban, but I can get another new Cuban right now. And three years from now, it's still a Cuban. It's still diamonds and gold. It still had value, and it might have gone up, but that car ain't going up. It's going down, so I don't care about that. I mean, I like nice cars. Don't get it. I'm not about to be in no bull shit. But this jury shit is just me. I, the you know. guy is knowledgeable. <laughs> Listen, knowledgeable. So I got yeah. an addiction. I got an addiction to being successful. To for the, me, to the finer things in life. I got yeah, to the finer things in life. But cars ain't that ain't it for real. What about women? Beautiful women. I like beautiful women. I respect women. I respect women, and I study women, and I like women. For the ladies out there, you know, we got playing gang Mike in the building. I'm going to just go ahead and let, him know, let, let y'all know what this is. Uh, are you in a relationship? Would you be considered single, ready to mingle, or in between? Shit, I'm single, ready to mingle. Hey, tell them to pay. Give them your, give them your whole, give them your, give them your uh, you know, oh, you Instagram, can follow all that good shit. It's yeah. all good. You know what I'm saying? It's all love. You can follow me on PGE Uncle Mike on IG, playing gang Mike. Uh, I don't be on Facebook for real like that. I know either. It seems like I know. But I, I, but I post, Facebook is a damn good place. If you could figure that shit out, I post a lot of my, my a lot of stuff that go to my Facebook come right through my IG. Yeah, so I'm like PGE too. Uncle Mike mm-hmm. on IG and on um, Playing Gang TV on YouTube. I'm building my YouTube page. It's trash right now. It ain't trash. Don't let them tell y'all that. that hey, hey, mm-hmm. y'all know how that YouTube shit work. But hey. that that's where I, that's where you know what I'm saying. Other than that. You know, Pelican Room 122 East Main Street is the city's best kept secret. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. A curfew yeah. has been lifted. Let's go there. <laughs> Let's go there. Let's be there tonight. Yeah. Let's go there. Yeah. But I'll I be cool. You know what I'm saying? I got a couple young ladies that I'm entertaining, you know, conversation. But, you know, I'm 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 picky. You can't Any female can't just talk to me. Yeah. Just be like that. He worked his way to pickiness. <laughs> pickiness. He worked yeah. his way to pickiness. That's so cool. so this cool. is the last question for the night. Yeah. You know, hey, when we come back, we're gonna definitely have the visual. This is gonna be even a better interview. This one, this was a great interview. But yeah, hey, hey, this cool, is a good man. one. You know what I'm saying? Humble. I said I had to make it, I had to make it to my brother's show, man. This is major for this me right major, now. Major, you know major, major. Yeah. So this is the last question. Where do you see yourself in the next year? And what do you see yourself in the next five years? In the next year, you know, moving forward, multi-millionaire. In the next year, multi, multi, multi. And in the next five years, you know, on somebody's beach, pushing the buttons, trading stocks. You know what I'm saying? Not having to move too much. No yeah. muscle movement. Nah, uh-uh. Just trading stocks, you feel me? And uh, smoking weed in Jamaica or some shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, I travel a lot. I travel a lot, you feel me? So, what's say Experience? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's explore, experience, enjoy. Y'all remember that. And that's how we're going to go ahead and tap the night out. Playing hey, gang. Playing gang entertainment in the building. <laughs> playing gang Mike. Hey, Mr. Always Pringles the Barber. <laughs> yeah, always cutting. Mr. Pringles the Barber, a.k.a. always cutting. Yeah. Mr. Hans Hancho, I am him not... Them. <laughs> hey, we up out of here, man. Holla at you.